Welcome everyone to today's podcast. My name is Paul. I'm a happy member of Cocaine Anonymous and I live in Peterhead in Scotland. I'm really pleased to have been joined by Jo. Hi, my name's Jo and I'm an um, addict and I come from Northampton in the UK. Well, I'm really uh, pleased you've joined us today. Thank you so much. That's okay. Thank you, Paul. So we're going to be discussing the topic today. Am I ready to become a sponsor? Um, but before we get on to that topic, I'd just like to invite Joe to share uh, about recovery in general terms for a few minutes with our listeners. Yes, I mean, my um, I didn't have a bad childhood as such, which a lot of people say that's what led them to drink. However, I had a mixed up childhood because my dad was a vicar at the time, which led me to rebel. And I rebelled on drink, on drugs, on anything I could get my hands on, basically. And it set my, I had mental health problems as well, which set that off not very well. I mean, mixing drugs and drink with mental health issues is not a good recipe at all. So, of course, I was like the jaywalker. So those that are new, that is in the book. Um, and, you know, you will go through that if you decide to go through the book with somebody or on your own. And, um, you know, I was the one that would be on the motorway and the police stopping the cars to because I was too drunk or too stoned or too, you know, on, off my face. And I put myself in very dangerous situations when I was in the state of not being recovered and being having the addiction and the illness of alcohol and um, cocaine and whatever I would put into my body. Um, I came across CA four years ago, five years, no, it must be five years ago now, in 2017. And I wasn't quite ready to take it on because I, I went there, heard somebody speak, one, you know, wanted what she had, but wondered how the 12 steps would actually touch me in a way that it touched her. I couldn't see how 12 black um, steps that had been written on a board could you know be the answer to all my addiction and drinking issues so you know I went off not the rails I still stayed around CA but I wasn't really um, taking it in as uh, as I needed to and I had got a sponsor however I let go of my sponsor, then my sponsor let go of me because I was in and out of hospital and not really working the program. And, you know, it's just like, I ended up with a sponsor, re you know, recently, I went through the book from start to finish with a sponsor recently. And she highly suggested things to me for me to do. And I mean, I'm not gonna go too much into the, horrible bits that I did because there was a lot more but I think I want to you know go for the positive side of my story really and my sponsor brought the book of Alcoholics Anonymous to life and made it part of my story and um you know didn't make me do anything I didn't want to do but I felt free afterwards and I could dance um not literally but I was feeling like I was dancing on a cloud of you know um cotton wool it was lovely and um you know I've since sponsored others since then and you know that's my story really in a nutshell but um yeah it was a long you know starting from the age of nine and I'm 47 now and I'm over two years clean now and it, you know it has been a rough ride but I'm still alive and I'm still here and I'm grateful to my higher power who I call God and um you know I just say thank you to that so over to you Paul. 
That is so beautiful. Um, and I'm so pleased you're here with us today. Thank you so much for sharing that, Joe. Yeah, so it started off with, uh, with, with cannabis. Cannabis became cannabis and alcohol, <clears throat> which became speed, intravenous speed in the late teens, um, which became involved in supply uh, and lots of tussles with the law. It's a direct result of that. In fact, virtually all my tussles with the law have been that. And um, yeah, so, you know, like yourself, uh, Joe, I came along to meetings and I kept coming along to meetings. Um, and recovery, I think, is one of the best best shows on earth. You know, to get free and to stay free. I think the power of the fellowship is the thing. You know, the shared experience, both in the negative and the positive. You know, when we 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 share what it was like when we was using and drinking every day, and the feelings around that, and the behaviours, and the consequences. You know, are often very very similar, and in recovery in whatever term you want to use, sobriety, deliverance from active addiction, our feelings are very similar and our behaviours become very similar uh, and our consequences are very similar. And this time around, they're good consequences from good behaviour uh, and when we do good things, we generally feel good. When we do esteemable things, our self-esteem grows and um, the process of sobriety has been really, really good to me, Joe. You know, it's probably one of the best decisions I ever made. And uh, for anyone new that's just tuned in, you know, recovery is a wonderful thing. Sobriety is, is worthwhile. Um, you know, you, you can definitely have a better future free from drug addiction. Um, if you just logged on to this one video on YouTube, we, we have over 16 other videos, one on each of the 12 steps of Cocaine Anonymous. We've got one that's an introduction to CA Steps Program Fellowship. Um, we've got another one called What is Sponsorship? We've got another one that's Psychic Change, an entire psychic change. Um, the ABCs of Addiction, the Problem and Solution. So there's lots of podcasts for you to listen to. Um, the topic of this one is, am I ready to become a sponsor? So... Now, this podcast is, is aimed, I suppose, at persons that perhaps are completing or have just completed the 12 steps uh, and are now looking at the possibility of, of taking someone else through our beautiful literature and this beautiful process of 12-step recovery. Uh, and I suppose, you know, it's just a brief look at the topic. You know, as with any of the topics we covered, Joe, thousands of things could be said about them. Mm -hmm. And I'm not a spokesman for CA. I'm just a member sharing sharing my opinion. So if anyone has any thoughts, anything they want to add to the conversation, anything they think we've missed or they want to put us right, please do so in the chat below this video, and we'll we'll do our best to to respond if anyone has any questions. Um, if anyone's still struggling with addiction, please please get yourself along to a Cocaine Anonymous meeting. Um, there are lots of CA meetings on Zoom around the clock. Um, there's lots of really good CA meetings. If you were to go to cocaineanonymous.org.uk, that's one word, cocaineanonymous.org.uk, you would get a list of meetings, both face-to-face -face and online in Britain. If you were to go to ca-online.org, you would get a list of, of, of online meet of other online meetings. So there's lots and lots of meetings. So my motivation for this podcast um, that I've been contemplating for some time now, Joe, was the reality that there appears to be a bit of a grey area, a bit of an area where there's a lack of information and knowledge uh, for persons to decide if they are fit and ready and able to be a sponsor in Cocaine Anonymous. Mm -hmm. Right? People yeah. sometimes, oh, well, I'm kind of completing this. I'm coming towards step 12 and... Oh, I just don't know. Am I ready? Or should I? Shouldn't I? How do I do it? And and the next podcast we make on this channel will be how do I sponsor? You know, how do I do it? That will be the next video, right? But this video is am I ready to become a sponsor? So so in terms of the topic, how did you decide, and how did you know that you were ready to become a sponsor? 
Well, early on in my work, work with another sponsor, the fact that I got to my step four on three occasions mm -hmm. and got let down either by bereavement, relapse, not by me, by somebody else, or me being in hospital, I felt I didn't want somebody else to have to go through um, that kind of thing. And there wasn't many female sponsors within our face-to-face -face meetings. And there wasn't many females online at the time because I there was two Zoom babies that I um, sponsored which was different to doing this in person, which I'm doing at the moment. Um, I was scared to start with. I didn't feel that I was ready as such, but I felt that I wanted to do it. And I didn't feel that I had the, um, the support from my sponsor at the time, which was, a, a really sad shame at the time you know at that time the first time I sponsored somebody so I went through the book again and that's when I came out feeling like I was on cloud nine and you know I I dived straight into you know somebody said to me there's somebody who needs a sponsor she's got mental health problems would you mind sponsoring her? And I thought, well, I've got mental health problems. Maybe I can help her, you know? I have the ability to understand the mental health, which my sponsor was able to do, and the alcoholic or addict nature. And, um, you know, I could understand it as a disease, as an illness, and they, they were a very sick person. And for my sobriety at that time, I needed to be working with somebody else for me to understand my own um, character defects because I people please too much and I have to be careful of that. Um, but I've always been a person that likes to help people and that was more my driving point, I guess. And that's why I decided to become a sponsor. I see, I see. So, I mean, for me, you know, um, I had to have a home group. This is, this is what I feel, you know, a home group is very, very important. It's like a family base. It's a place where I get to know some of the members. I get to hear their message. I know their stories. Um, I identify with their stories and it's a home, you know, it's a meeting I go to regularly, I perhaps have service there, I have a base there, I have a knowledge base and an experience base, there are persons in the room that I can get counsel from, right, so if I'm in the process taking someone through the steps, I also have a support group that's very yeah. often, some of the members are from the home group that I'm a member of. Mm -hmm. So there are persons there who, if I'm sponsoring someone, take them through the process, through the literature, prayerfully and thoughtfully, I can say, right, I've got this situation with this person I'm working with. Um, you know, what's your suggestions? What's your thoughts? Of course, we never divulge anything personal, private, and we ought never to mention names. For me, it's a very private thing. Uh, sponsoring somebody but in general terms I can always go to someone in general terms and say look what do you think about this you know what what what's the best way forward or this principle or this question or this issue so I not only have I got a home group right where I attend regularly perhaps have service I've got a support group Joe which is likely five or six blokes that I've got some kind of connection we don't mean I need to give them my surname uh, yeah. you know, or, or particular personal details, but they're persons I relate with. They're persons whose sobriety I respect and whose wisdom I respect, you know. Um, so I have a home group, I have a support group. I've probably read the first 164 pages of our basic text, which is a book called Alcoholics Anonymous, a chapter of which we have on the screen right now, We've got a chapter on the screen called Working with Others. Um, 
And so I will have read through, I mean, the big book, Alcoholics Anonymous. If anyone would like a copy, you get it eBay, Amazon for 14 pounds delivered. You get it elsewhere. You can read or listen to the big book completely free at aa.org anytime. Um, you can also listen to a, an audio version on, on YouTube that's got timestamps for each chapter. So it says in the comments at eight minutes, 32 seconds, chapter two thing. And then it tells you where all the chapters are. So you can fast forward to any chapter. That's another resource. Um, and, you know, it's about over 500 pages long. It's a big book, hence why it's called a big book. But the program is the first 164 pages. So before I sponsor... I'll have want to have read through that at least two or three times, Joe. You know, yeah. I will have want to have read the 12 steps out of our second book, which is the 12 and 12, the 12 steps and 12 traditions. I will have want to have read the 12 steps out of the 12 and 12 at least a couple of times, right? I will have discussed sponsoring um, with my sponsor, mm -hmm. right? I will want to have an idea of boundaries. Uh, 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 of how much time I'm prepared to invest in sponsoring someone, right? I will have made a decision as a male that I'm more than likely only to sponsor males, right? I will have an idea, Joe, uh, how I'm going. I mean, there are dozens of ways to take people through the 12 steps of Cocaine Anonymous. Mm -hmm. Dozens. I will need to know which way I'm going to take someone through the 12 steps. You know, um, I will need to be aware that I will need a relationship with God. You know, I will need power and wisdom and strength to be able to sponsor somebody. Right. I will need to be actively working the 12 step program of Cocaine Anonymous on a daily basis. You know, so th these are some of the things that I think are important. Um, what, what do you think? I agree very much. I mean, I was thinking more about the personal side of it when I was speaking. But yes, a home group, I think, is a very big must. Having people that you can call on and say, look, I've got this issue and or not this issue, but I've got this problem I need to sort out. I need to or I need to figure out I need to find a way around it. And being able to call on some, you know, like minded women who are also armed with the facts of the 12 steps and the 12 and 12 um, helps me, you know, greatly. And there are many times where I have spoken to people and again, anonymously, nobody has to know who it is I'm talking about. Um, and I don't give any telling signs but I may ask for advice so I can then do my best for this person. I do believe as a sponsor, you need to definitely have a listening ear and a discerning ear. I think they're very strong. You need to have read the 12 steps and you need to have done it more than once, like you said. I mean, I've done it in numerous ways. I've got three big books because of course, every time I've had a different sponsor, I've got a new one. And we've gone through it differently, you know, whether it's underlying, whether underlining or whether it's circling or I mean, I, I know that's that's nothing, but, you know, in a different ways, basically. And, you know, the way I use the way I go through it is with my how I went through it with my last one, because that's the one that I ended up on the cloud, cloud nine sort of thing. And I spoke to her before I um sponsored and also she gave me a list of suggestions of such to help me with my you know sponsoring as such I I also do believe that I mean I, I know you touched on the fact that you know you need to have God in your life and I think, you know, having a morning meditation and knowing the importance of meditation and prayer is a really um, crucial part of sponsorship. Because the thing is, if you're not doing 
the things that you're suggesting and I'm saying suggesting because you can't make anybody do anything that that you're not prepared to do yourself and you I mean you can't force somebody to do anything anyway because that's not what sponsorship's about it's not about saying to somebody you must do this it's more I suggest you do this it might help you um you know and you've got to realize that it's not you that's doing the program you're doing your pro I mean you are going through the program again for yourself because I know going through it with my sponsor at the moment I'm going through it again with myself you know I'm I'm on um step four and step five um you know and it's shown me my journey and you know I also know that I'm an asset or not an asset I'm a carrier should I say I don't govern I mean it says that in the 12 traditions you know I'm not governing her um but I'm an asset and so if she does go back out and drink or use drugs it's not my fault it's her choice and I have to remember that because there are some people that I have known that a sponsor said, well, all my sponsees went out and started drinking and, you know, drugging again. And I'm like, well, you've got to remember that we're all sick people. You know, we were all like that once upon a time and we cannot have control over people because that's not what it's about. You know, it's, um, yeah it's like you can you can bring a horse to water but you can't make him drink and that's what always you know I put in mind and when you're working with somebody you always remember to put the life jacket on first before you rescue somebody else because you've got to be spiritually fit and spiritually well before you then can take somebody else through something and that's my two sort of like mantras as such, or well, not mantras, but my mottos, should I say. And that's that's what I believe anyway. So I don't know what you think, Paul. I think that's uh, that's precisely what I think. That's an ample description uh, of the, the purpose uh, and message of this podcast, you know, that, really we've got to have the life jacket on before we can help anyone else mm. um you know I, I i think as i say I'm, I'm thinking of persons that are perhaps are completing or about to complete the 12 steps although in a sense you never complete the 12 steps but we know what we mean complete yeah. a round of the steps that are, that are thinking of uh, you know of, of taking someone else through the 12 steps now it has to be said the word sponsor and sponsee do not appear anywhere in the big book is our basic text i don't particularly like those terms you know for me uh, i'm just working with others i do occasionally use it but i'm not keen on them you know um, two alcoholics or two addicts working together are equal in cocaine anonymous you know we are we are equal we meet meet on equal terms um i would say the issue of continuous sobriety how long um just very briefly just I'm, i've still got a few things to say joe but how long very briefly do you think someone ought to be sober before they sponsor a day a week a year five years do you know i really believe that the first year is one of the hardest years to get through um too many people sponsor too quickly so how and long over a year I mean, you know, it's a very important question because traditionally in, in, in AA, you, they usually wait a little bit longer than a few months and, and, in, and in NA, but in CA, you hear people with a month sponsoring or yeah. two months and, and that's up to them, you know, God bless them. That's up to them. I'm not necessarily against that. Personally, I, th I think someone needs several months, you know, stability uh, and knowledge and wisdom an attentiveness you know on consistency um, you know I, I don't believe that everyone that goes through the 12 steps must become a sponsor I don't believe that right 
I, I also uh, don't believe that, you know, that the persons uh, ought to be commanded to, to do, to take someone through 12 steps by their sponsor. It's become prevalent, particularly in CA, right? Get through the steps, become a sponsor, take someone else through the work. Rah, rah, rah. Hang on a minute. Some people have got serious mental health issues, right? Uh, some people, not so serious mental health issues, but have got other uh, concerns around their mind and their behaviours, and they're just simply not ready to do it. It's a huge responsibility, in my opinion. Now, I think if people do want to become a sponsor, then more power to them. And I heartily encourage persons that have been through the process, got a home group, a support group, and a knowledge of the big book, uh, you know, not necessarily chapter and verse, but but are, are knowledgeable around the big book and have a, an active support group. You know, I think it's a wonderful thing if they want to take someone through the 12-step process. However, be aware that you're committing to dozens of hours of intensive work with somebody. You know, be clear on the parameters, Joe. Uh, you know, I've seen a lot of people say, oh, my phone's on, call me anytime. But they do, that, that's a lie. They don't really mean that. You try ringing them up, they won't answer. Oh, my phone's on any time, just ring any time. Hang on a minute. So are you telling me you're willing to consistently answer the phone at 2 a.m.? Oh, well, well, don't say you are then. Mm -hmm. Right? Let's keep it real. Right? If I'm prepared to sponsor someone, Joe, there are certain boundaries and things that I need to have in place. You know, and in the next podcast, we'll be discussing those things. But in this podcast, the issue of folks that are perhaps got a month or two months clean and sober, um, perhaps they're, they're hearing this message that they must become a sponsor, you know, and that's a wonderful thing. It's one of the greatest experiences on earth to see people set free and stay free from drug addiction is a wonderful, wonderful thing. And it's happening every day, you know, uh, but I think we need to have that personal connection with God. Uh, I think we need to be established in our home group. I think we need a settled and established support group. Uh, I think we need to be working this program of action on a daily basis. Uh, and I think we need to, to have a working knowledge uh, of the process of, of the steps. What, what do you think? I think that very much. I mean, it does say, on the first page of working with others to be honest um you know about how when it's a practical experience experience shows that nothing will so much ensure immunity from drinking as intensive work with other alcoholics which to be honest can be hard work and that does not mean sponsoring so much it works when other activities fail this is our 12th suggestion. It's not saying this is what you shall, shall do. This is what you must do. And that's the difference. You know, it says it's the 12th suggestion to carry this message to other alcoholics. You can do that by somebody saying, you know, I, you know, or, or cocaine addicts. I mean, I'm on, I'm on a hotline which will help somebody find somebody to go to a meeting with them you know and that isn't sponsorship but that's working with other addicts that's being part of you know helping them I mean it took me a while to believe in myself as being a sponsor and even now I question myself at times because I think am I going too slow am I going too fast you know but everybody's different um and I know we're not actually talking about that so I won't go into that too much because it's I am I ready um and yes I do believe that it's it's the fellowship that helps you and um not everybody can become a sponsor and I mean, I, like I say, I have got mental health problems, but my mental health problems come out more so when I'm drinking and drugging. And also I have problems and I can now start to um, notice the telltale signs. 
So that's why I say put my life jacket on before I help others, whereas before I'd help others before I put my life jacket on and then wonder why I ended up in hospital or ended up in a halfway house, you know, not for drinking or doing anything, but for my mental health reasons. And, you know, I needed at one stage to take three weeks off and put the boundaries in place with my sponsor, my sponsees that I had. And I said, look, if you want to find another sponsor, you are quite welcome to, because they're not my property. They can go wherever they want and it's their choice. Yeah. And, you know, the boundaries I put in place is like, my phone goes off at 10 o'clock at night. It turns off. I have said to this, I mean, I've only got one sponsor at the moment, I have said to my sponsor, if you are in really horrendous trouble and you, as in, you know, she's really craving the drink, she's really craving to do something and she really needs to talk to somebody. She's got my home line and only then does she phone me later because she's not a person that would phone me all the time because she's very quiet. She doesn't phone me most of the time but I wouldn't do that to somebody who was phoning me every five minutes if you see what I mean yes I do see what you mean so so in terms of um you know readiness I think if I'm living in 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 10 11 and 12 which means I'm admitting if I'm wrong I'm continuing Mm -hmm. to keep an eye on my behavior and my speech Um, I'm seeking God through prayer and meditation um You know, I'm seeking to improve daily my conscious contact with God. Um, then I'm aware that I've had and I'm having an ongoing spiritual experience, mm-hmm. a set of vital spiritual experiences that are both educational and often sudden. Yes. Right. Then I have a desire to share that message. And in the first instance, the places where I should be carrying the message are in meetings. Yes. And in conversations just like this one, Joe, every day with mm-hmm. members of my support group that are not only members of my support group, but I'm a member of their support group. Yes. So I'm already in the business of carrying the message. Right. Exactly. I'm already in the business of trying to practice these principles in all my affairs every day. Right. And, and notice that when, when God gave Wilson specific wisdom, he gave him specific wisdom in the wording of the steps. It says in step 12, having had a spiritual learning as a result of these steps, we tried to carry this message. What message? The message of the spiritual awakening as a result of these steps. Mm-hmm. Didn't just wake up one day and, well, I feel a bit different. No. I have had a vital spiritual experience as a result of these steps. Yeah. And as a result of having a spiritual awakening as a result of these steps, I try to carry this message. I try to carry this message right, to other addicts. And I try to practice these principles in all my affairs. And, you know, if I'm already in the business of carrying that message regularly every day, hopefully, in some way, it's a daily program of action, Joe. I didn't get high on yesterday's supply. Yesterday's shower won't keep me clean today. Yeah, that's true. Right? It's what I've done today. Right? Now, today, I have things in place that will give me a vital spiritual experience today. Right? If you ring me up tonight, Joe, I will tell you about it. Mm-hmm. You know, I will tell you about the spiritual experiences. For example you know, that I that I will have had today because I have things in place that generate those vital spiritual experiences. See, and that is the nub of recovery. So, yeah. so if I'm in this business of carrying this message in a meeting, uh, in my support group on a regular basis, then I'm already carrying the message of these steps, you see. Mm-hmm. So, so the natural follow-on is that I take someone through this process. So if you're if you're listening to this podcast, then very likely you are getting ready to become a sponsor. Otherwise, you wouldn't be taking an interest in these things. If you've got a connection with God, you have a desire to help others. If you're placing God first, then others, and then yourself in that happy equation, 
then very likely you will want to communicate the substance of what you have. If you are trusting God and you are cleaned house, then you'll want to help others. It's in the giving we receive. You know, if you're listening to recovery podcasts and reading the literature, you're in prayer and meditation and journaling and working with others and you're a member of other people's support group uh, and people are in your support group, then very likely you are ready to become a sponsor. Mm-hmm. What, what do you think, Joe? Yeah, I mean, I'm totally with you there. It's like, um, you know, you should be sharing in meetings. It is the place to do it because everybody can hear. You're not dividing it's just one person, which I don't mean that you shouldn't do it to one person, but it's like your support network needs to hear what you've got to bring. Um, you know, whether, you know, as long as you're doing what, god asks you to do or your higher power asks you to do then the spiritual awakening will come and you know all your spiritual awakening will come and and you can pass that on to somebody within the group i mean and it's like if you think about it in bill's story i know we're you know not going into that too much but ebby came just as a friend he didn't come because he wanted to preach anything or sponsor anything. He came to just see his friend and his friend was battered and bruised and ended up listening. And he just thought he was a bit cracked. But, you know, it's like he just spoke and Bill listened and then he got the spiritual or he remembered the spiritual experience in Winchester. And it's like, and that's how it started about and um you know it doesn't mean that we have to go around telling every single person every bit of our life I mean you know when you go to a CA meeting you hear shares you hear people sharing you know their story in it and you can relate to it and you know that is a message in itself so you don't have to be a sponsor to give a message or to help somebody through, you know, to become well, if you understand what I mean, if you get it. So I don't know what you think to that. Absolutely. And, you know, I think the thing is, is if you're in the fellowship and you're acting in the fellowship, um, you know, you're part of the people's support group, you will know that when you're ready to take someone through this process. Yes. You know, I think that's the essence of things. Um, I felt a lot more ready this time than I did last time I felt a lot more supported this time than I did last time last time I was putting my life jacket on my sponsees and I mean my sponsees you know they're 18 months clean which is brilliant however you know they it was my sponsor that came to see my house see me in my house when I was very depressed and she was the one that pulled me out of the pit of self-pity and put on um it was like run to your throne which which was like about kneeling on your knees and you know before before the throne of God basically and I still remember listening to that song and just bawling my eyes out because I never cry when I'm depressed and she just gave me a hug and she was like it's all going to be okay and I was like do you know what I've always thought I was giving messages to other people whereas my sponsee gave a message to me that day and it's it's been something that was miraculous you know and I actually had a spiritual awakening that day um from my sponsee and um you know you you as a sponsor or if you decide to become a sponsor your sponsee is no less or no more than you you are still both on the same pathway to the same place where you want to be and that's what you've got to remember when you are sponsoring you are just the um it's not asset you're just the the carrier to this person and 
it doesn't mean that you know that you're not important at all but it's like you are not any more important than your sponsee and I really think people need to know that because some people become high and mighty and say you must do this you must phone me at 11 o'clock in the morning and I'm not saying that I well I don't I don't believe in that strictness okay okay so I'm sorry in terms of in in terms of readiness um i'd say you know if we i mean step work is to be done prayerfully and thoughtfully you know and and in my experience you know god leads and guides us we're much better cared for and preserved and taught than we realize you know, if, if you believe that, that the creator is, is the underlying force and power behind every atom, neutron and proton everywhere, the source and sustainer of everything, then, uh, you know, we, we're often led uh, and guided in the right paths. And so what I mean by that is, you see, if you're in a fellowship and you've got a home group, whether it's online or face to face, if you are praying each day and, and reading the literature, and you've got your own personal program of action, then very likely you are definitely ready, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, uh, it's a wonderful process. So I think it's a thrilling thing. It's, it's, it's living. Uh, yeah. And it, it's a living, a living thing to do. It, there's life in it, you know. Uh, and, and it's a very blessed and privileged thing to do. So if you've listened to this podcast today, um, then you have an interest in in sponsorship and taking people through the process, please feel free to like, subscribe and comment beneath the video. Uh, And please tune into our next podcast, which will be how do I sponsor? How do we actually sponsor? You know, and and what I want to talk about, Joe, now, you know, we've got a couple of minutes before the end of of this recording is is you know um um you know what is needful to be ready to sponsor and what what kind of conversations happen between ultimately you know people that, that go on to sponsor have, have got to sponsor themselves so this so this is another aspect i suppose you know the message that a sponsor gives to a sponsee uh, about if and when they are ready to sponsor, you know, and um, you know, I have to say that most people, in fact, thinking about it, Joe, pretty much everyone that I've, I've been privileged to take people through this process uh, are ready um, mm-hmm. to to take someone else through the process, but the reality is about half of them don't want to, <laughs> which yeah. is up to them. That's up to them. Yes. It's a real commitment. You know, I think readiness to, to sponsor means you've got to embrace the realities of it, that, that it ain't necessarily going to be easy. They ain't going to see things how you see things. They're going to mm-hmm. let you down. Uh, they're not going to deliver their step work on time. Uh, they're going to they're gonna sometimes, uh, you know, work the steps backwards you're going to have to say things to sponsees that they may not be particularly pleased to hear, you know, um, which we'll be discussing in the next podcast. Yes. But you've got to be prepared to to get your hands dirty if you want to work with drug addicts. Yes. You know, I mean, you know, whether whether it's a, a, a middle-class housewife that binges on a weekend or a, a homeless crack-and-smack burglar, you know, you, 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 mm-hmm. you're working with people that have been living in, in the madness and in the disease for some time. So you've got to be have a readiness to understand who you're dealing with. You know, you've got to remember who you're dealing with, you know. And, and so it's not necessarily easy, but it is very rewarding, you know. And, and with men, yeah. things are impossible. But with God, all things are possible, you know. And, 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 and I think I'll make this you know, my, my last point, and I'll let you back in for a minute or two in a moment, Joe, but, you know, um, I think it's one of the greatest experiences you can have is seeing someone successfully complete the 12-step program, uh, have a happier future, 
uh, their relationships restored their, with their parents, their partners, their children, their neighbours, to, to either retain their jobs or become employable again, right? For their health to improve, their mind to improve, their finances to improve. And I, I've been privileged to see that time and time and time again, Joe. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah. so the, the rewards for others are, are marvellous. You know, and it is in the giving we, we receive. I totally agree with that, absolutely and ultimately. And you know what I always think, and there's a quote that I saw um, at one stage, and it's been recently on Facebook, so people might have seen it, but it's like the, the magic that you see, or not the magic, but the... Yeah, I can't remember what it actually says, but it's not magic, but the magic of seeing the eyes open and, you know, for the very first time and, you know, them actually have a light that, you know, and the smile. Somebody said to me once um, I'd had the light bulb moment that I used to call it, you know, my spiritual awakening. It was like, Joe, what's happened to you? And I was like, what do you mean? She said, your face, your eyes, you're just beaming. And I was like, really? Have I been, I was thinking, have I been that sad all that time? <laughs> but, you know, it was like, it was nice to hear that somebody had noticed that things had happened within me. And um, it wasn't just my thoughts. And, you know, I see it when I'm working with others. Um, you know, I see their eyes being opened for the first times because, like you say, you know, they get their lives back on track. Things change. Life becomes, it becomes not just about the pipe or, you know, whatever. It becomes about, family life sometimes you know it doesn't matter there's a whole end of different things that it can come to them like you said like work you know um getting back into education um all that kind of thing I mean I've got a job um it's part-time but I've got a job at the moment which is brilliant and I wouldn't have got that if I hadn't been through the things that I have done and you know I'm doing something on um one of the days which is about alcohol and drugs not to do with CA but to do with how do you work with their uh, mental health patients that have got alcohol and drug problems and I'm blessed to be part of it so you know I just thank you for listening you know and thank you for inviting me to be able to speak with you Paul you know because as you know I do find you very wise and I do like to, you know, find, um, not answers, what I'm, what I'm trying to say is counsel off you sometimes. And, you know, I appreciate that. And yes, I just, I just want to say thank you. Well, the feeling's mutual. I'm really pleased you've mm -hmm. come along today. Um, we, we've just, we've got a couple of minutes left yet. And, and I really just wanted to think Joe about persons that as I say are perhaps about to complete a round of the steps or, or have just completed a round of the 12 steps of, of recovery and, and, and are now very likely armed with the facts about addiction and recovery right? are very likely having an ongoing spiritual experience that has to be mm -hmm. shared that's the thing when you know it's like if you if you discover gold well, I don't know. Nowadays, people would want to keep it to themselves, perhaps. But if you, if you, you know, if you made yeah. a great discovery of how everyone in the world could have clean running water, you would, you well, I suppose you'd, you'd want to give it everyone for free, wouldn't you? You would. Um, you know, uh, and if you've discovered something that works, a spiritual experience, um, a program to get free from active addiction, you would want to carry that message. You know, and, and whilst it is a fact, there's various ways to carry the message and it all begins in the home. Recovery has to work at home, you know, in, in real life. You know, it's who we are when we're alone with God. That's who we really are. Um, but the privilege of working with others 
Um, I think um, if we are ready to commit time and energy to an individual, if we are ready to share our experiences and where we have strength uh, and our strengths uh, and our hopes, um, then we are largely and generally ready to become a sponsor in Cocaine Anonymous. Um, yeah, I, I think I think as well our sponsor would guide us. You know, we, we very much mm -hmm. ought to seek our sponsor's direction. You know, um, you know, if the sponsor says that that we are ready, um, then generally we are ready. Yes. Um, but you know, as I say, I would sound a note of caution against any sponsor that that gives commands. That's mm. not that's something that's relatively new, you know. Uh, yeah, I mean, going back for decades, classically uh, in AA uh, and CA, they didn't do that. It is a pro. Even the steps are suggested. It says clearly in the book. This is a suggested program of recovery. Now, whilst yeah. it's, true, it's also suggestive, you're jumping out of an aeroplane that you wear a parachute, um, you know, so mm -hmm. I mean, the, the suggestions are very, very good. And in my experience, you know, the goose is good. For, what's good for the goose, the goose is good for the gander. You know, mm -hmm. whilst every human being is wonderfully unique, every human being is wonderfully the same. <laughs> you know, prayer, meditation, meetings, step work, yeah. the literature. Um, perseverance, endurance, you know, character assets, faithfulness, uh, we're loving, we're patient, we're tolerant, we're kind. These things always, always, always work, these spiritual tools. You know, and once we learn how to use the spiritual tools, we are able uh, to equip others with these spiritual tools, you know. It's not that we're better, but we're better equipped, you know. I mean, yeah. a joiner is no better than a labourer. He just knows how to use tools that the labourer doesn't know how to use. That's very true. You know, and 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 we that's what we do. We we share our knowledge, our experience, strength, and hope. But this time, it's not just in a meeting or in a support group. It's intensively working with another recovery addict, with a view to them finding long-term sobriety. So that's more or less as I'd just like to let you back in for a minute or two to share as we, we, we start to close things up, Joe. Yeah, I was going to say, I mean, the book does say it's suggestive only. This book is suggestive only. Um, you know, and, you know, you touched on that subject. And I mean, we have got the 12 step promises, you know, in there. So saying both you and the new man must walk day by day in the path of spiritual progress. If you persist, remarkable things will happen. When we look back, we realize that the things which came to us when we put ourselves in God's hands were better than anything we could have planned. Follow the dictates of a higher power and you will presently live in a new and wonderful world, no matter what your present circumstances. And I love that paragraph because it's saying that, you know, if you put your hands in your higher power into God's hands, then um, it's going to be better than we could ever imagine. And if you can imagine something absolutely brilliant, it's going to be better than that. And, you know, it's um, we're going to live in a, you know, a wonderful new world. And yes, I have. Since I've come into recovery, since I've had spiritual awakening, you know, and I've had a really good sponsor, I have just, you know, I have my down days, don't get me wrong. However, my good days are so much more than my bad days. And I get through times of angst as such in a very different way because I have God on my side and I've had the spiritual awakening and yeah, that's that's all I've really got to say. But if you, um, you know, if you feel you want to sponsor, then speak to your sponsor about it. And I'm sure that between you, you will realise when the time is right if you consult with your higher power. Absolutely. And, you know, if anyone's tuned into this and you're still struggling with drug addiction, please come along to a meeting. Uh, please reach out in meetings. You can even reach out in the chat. 
Mm -hmm. uh, and someone from our group will get back to you. There are many, many, many online Zoom meetings. Don't be put off coming to a Zoom meeting. You don't have to put your camera on. Uh, in fact, only a third or a quarter or sometimes even much less than that of attendees at a Zoom meeting put their camera on. So don't ever think you, you, if you come to a Zoom meeting, you've got to put your camera on. Most people, very few do. Don't even think you need to share. No one's going to force you to share. You can just come along and listen and hear the message of hope, faith and courage that an addict, any addict can quit using, lose the desire to use and find a new way to live. You know, so by all means, come along to a CA meeting check out the other podcasts on here there's lots of good CA podcasts on YouTube you know there's lots of really good meetings we've been reading today on the screen from a book called Alcoholics Anonymous we often call the big book as I said it's available to read in its entirety or to listen to in its entirety anytime at aa.org can also be bought for around 14 pounds delivered from eBay Amazon and elsewhere there's lots of great literature. Uh, we are here and we are free. Cocaine Anonymous welcomes you. We will love you till you love yourself. Um, everything can be put right in recovery. Um, you know, we, it is a bridge to normal living. Um, it is a way to get free and to stay free. Um, and it is a wonderful process. So I'd heartily recommend the 12-step process to anyone new or that's listening to this. And he's not familiar with Cocaine Anonymous. There's nothing to sign. There's no promises to make to anyone. You can't really go wrong, you know. Um, so by all means, please come along um, and experience the meetings. Feel free to rewind um, or, or pause this video to read the pages we've got on the screen. So without further ado, thank you so, so much, Joe. It's always a pleasure to hear you. And um, yeah, we'll be back with another podcast in a few days. Uh, about uh, how do I sponsor? That'll be the next one. How do I sponsor? And may I just interrupt one second and just say Alcoholics Anonymous, their actual website, you can buy an AA book for eight pounds um, straight from them. And very reasonable. it's a very, it goes straight to AA then. That is really reasonably priced. Thank you so much. Do you know the name of that website? Sure. Yes, it's um, www.alcoholics-anonymous.org.uk. Brilliant, brilliant. So you just go onto that and then you can order a book through them and they're usually about seven days till you get it, but it is it goes straight to the AA books rather than Amazon's profits. Okay, brilliant. That's great. Thanks so much, Joe. So um, thanks, everyone, for tuning in today. And, uh, yeah, I hope you can join us again for our next recording. Thanks, Joe. Thank you. Shalom, shalom. Shalom.